This is problem 37 from chapter 21. You have two electrons that are 1.5 times 10 to the negative 10 meters from a proton. You're asked to find the magnitude and direction of the net electric force they will exert on the proton. Okay, so we know that we're looking for an electric force. The force equations that we know are F equal to K times K or for Q1, Q2 over R squared. We're asked to find what the electrons are doing to the proton. This is proton, electron electron. Since we're doing a net force, we're going to be figuring out the total force of that E1 is doing on P and E2 is doing on P. These two charges have opposite signs to each other, so we know that the forces are going to be attracted to each other. All right. So if we're trying to find the net force, let's try and figure out the force of E1 on P and the force of E2 on P and add them together. We did a similar problem like this when all the charges were on the x-axis. Now they're not in a straight line which means we're going to have to break them up into component-wise functions. The, way, the easiest way I find is to put one of, the point, or one of the two pairs on an axis. So that way you only have to break the, break the other um, point up into component forms. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Let's treat E2 and P as if it was on the x-axis. So. If we're going to try and find the force of E2 on P, it's simply going to equal K times QP, QE1, divided by R squared. And we know all these, these um, numbers. It's given to us as a constant that the charge of an electron is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs per electron. And this is also the same as the charge of a proton, except with differing signs. The electron is negative and the proton is positive, so negative times negative is positive. All right, this is a constant. These two are both this, so we can just take 1.6 times 10 to the neg negative 19th and square it, and then we can input this r into here. And when you calculate that, you should get 1.6 025 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons or thereabouts. Alright, now since we're pretending that this is on the x-axis, all of the force of E2 on P is going in the x-direction. So we can call this the x-component of the force E2 on, e P, on P. That means we're done. There's no y component here that we have to deal with. Now let's go to E1. This one we're going to have to break up into components. First of all, let's find what the force of E1 on P is equal to. That's going to be K times QP, Q of E2, over R squared. Again, both E2 or E1 
I'm sorry, we're doing E1 here. Both E1 and P are going to have the same charge, as well as the same charge as E2. Therefore, this is also going to equal 1.025 times 10 to the negative 8 nanos, or, um, newtons. The difference here is we have to break it up into components. So when we break it up into components, we're taking this F and we're going to find F of X, F of Y. Or if we put it in a triangle, F, Fx, Fy, and here we have this angle, which is going to be our 65. All right, let's first find F of E1, or yeah, E1 on P, X. This is going to equal, using our Sokotoa rules, we know that cosine of an angle equals the opposite. Oh, I'm sorry, Sokine is Soko Sokotoa. So the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite, which is Fy, over the hypotenuse, which is F, and the cosine of the angle is equal to Fx over F. So since we're finding the x component, we're going to put cosine of the angle in. If we're trying to find F of x, you multiply both sides by F, so this should equal F cosine of the angle, which we have as 65. Then F E1 on P of Y, you want to find this, this measurement, multiply both sides of this by F, it's going to be F sine of the angle, which is 65. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this just so we have some room. When you put this in your calculator, you're going to take this value in for F, and you're going to get something along the lines of 4.33 times 10 to the negative ninth nanos, and 9.29 times 10 to the negative ninth. I keep saying nanos, it's, new, it's newtons. Okay, now you have component wise for this vector and you have component wise for this vector. In order to find the net force vector, you're going to add components first. F E2 on P X plus F E1 on P X going to equal f of x, which means you're going to be taking this value, 1.025 times 10 to the negative 8th, plus this value, 4.33 times 10 to the negative 9th, and you're going to get 1.46 times 10 to the negative 8th. Now if you're going to do all of this for the y components you're going to take this value which we decided is 0 it doesn't have a y value and this value and add them together so you get 9.29 times 10 to the negative ninth all right so now we have this value and we have this value. We want this value. This is F total. 
we can go back to our Sokotoa rules, or not even our Sokotoa rules, we're going to go back to our Pythagorean rules, where f squared is equal to fx squared plus fy squared. So f total net is going to equal the square root of f of x squared plus f of y squared. And when you plug that into your calculator, you're going to get 1.729 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons. All right. That takes care of the magnitude of the force. But the question asks to find the magnitude and the direction of the net electric force. We can get an idea. We know that both of these forces are coming in a positive x and positive y direction. But we need to be more specific. We need to find the angle that the final vector is going to form between the x-axis and the vector. So in order to do that, we're going to use our, um, this time we're going to use our Sokotoa rules. We have our, um, So we're going to draw this again. We have the f. We have the f of f x, and we have the f y, and we want to find this angle for our total f. The easiest way that I find to do it, without having to change any, you know, multiplying around, is using the tan, because tan is just this number times this number. And that way, if you accidentally made a misstep during this process, you're more likely to get it right using the tan instead of the sine or a cosine. So if we do tan of the theta that we're looking for, it's going to equal Fy over Fx. So the theta is equal to inverse tan Fy over Fx. Don't forget to make. Don't forget to put your calculator into degrees if you want to put. If you want to have your answer in degrees, and you're going to get thirty-two point five degrees. This is the conclusion of the proof.